our goal is to use LLVM with Flex and Bison for the generation of intermediate representation. However, prior to that, we must be familiar with the key LLVM classes, their usage and their relationship with each other. That is the subject of this video. After this video, you will be ready to integrate LLVM with Flex and Bison. So let's start. I believe that the key LLVM classes to know before writing any code in order of their usage are LLVM context, module, IR builder, type and its various subclasses, function, basic block, value, user and instruction and its subclasses. In this video, we will write an example LLVM code to generate the IR of a function that adds two integers and returns their sum. While writing the code, we will discuss each of the above mentioned classes in detail. The first class we must know is LLVM context. The LLVM context class provides isolation and threat safety. Consider an example where we have a single compiler server. On this server, three different LLVM instances are running, sharing the same physical space. However, because they have different contexts, they do not interfere with each other. Each LLVM context ensures that the data structure within one context do not overlap or conflict with those in another, allowing multiple LLVM instances to operate independently within the same application. This isolation is crucial for maintaining stability and correctness in multi-threaded environments. Another purpose of the LLVM class is to provide uniqueing of types and constants. Consider a scenario where we create a constant integer object with the value 42. Now, whenever we create another constant integer object with the value 42 within the current context, LLVM will return the same object. This phenomenon of uniqueing provides faster code execution and reduce memory consumption. Now, let's jump in and write the code to create an LLVM context. I have already written a C++ main function. For simplicity, I will write all the code inside the main function. First, I include LLVM slash IR slash LLVM context dot H. Subsequently, I add a line using namespace LLVM. Then in the main function, I create an LLVM context object by writing LLVM context space context semicolon. I will be adding more code in the same file as we learn about more classes of LLVM. After creating the LLVM context, we should create a module object. A module is the top level container for all the LLVM IR. It implies it contains all other objects that may contain IR such as a set of function objects, a set of global variable objects and a value symbol object. Thus, through the module object, we can generate the entire IR for our source file. 
in my C++ code, I first include LLVM slash IR slash module dot H. Then I create a unique pointer of the module class. The constructor of the module object takes a name and a context. The uniquing provided by the LLVM context ensures that there can be at most one module with a given name in a context. Next, we create the IR Builder class. This utility class has many useful functions to create basic blocks, IR instructions, and types. To create an IR Builder object, we include LLVM slash IR slash IR Builder dot H and directly initiate an object of the class by passing the context object to its constructor. Note that all the constructors of LLVM classes either directly or indirectly takes a context object as a parameter. This enables the isolation of all the objects inside that context as we have discussed previously. We are done with the initialization phase of our code. We almost always have to perform these three steps. Creating the context, module, and IR Builder objects. Next, let's learn about the type class. The type class is used to specify the type of function parameters, function return types, instruction parameters, constant types, and more. You can see in the class diagram that the type class has many subclasses. In this video, we will be focusing on the type class and one of its subclasses, function type. Another important LLVM class is the function class. A module contains a set of functions, each with unique name, parameters, and return value. A function may contain multiple basic blocks. Let's use our knowledge of the type, function type, and function classes to write some useful code. Firstly, I include LLVM slash IR slash function dot H. Now in the main program, I want to create a LLVM function that takes two integers as parameter and returns their sum. To achieve this, I begin by creating a pointer to 32-bit integer type using type and pointer to variable int ty equals to builder.get int 32 ty. As types are unique within a context, I will use this same object to specify both the parameters and function return type. Next, I create my function parameters by adding the 32-bit integer type to a vector named params. To specify the function parameters and return type, we use the function type class. This line indicates that the function returns an integer and also take two integers as parameter. The last parameter false implies 
that the function has a fixed number of parameters. Now I create my function pointer named sum function. The function is created by passing its constructor, the function type object, specifying its linkage type such as external linkage, function name and the module to which it belongs. However, I cannot use this function without first naming its argument types. The arguments of a function are expressed as value class objects. I use the setName function of the value class to name the first integer argument arg1 and the second argument arg2. This newly created function has no IR instructions in it and it is empty. To add instructions, we first need to create basic block for this function. Recall that a module may contain multiple functions. Each function may contain multiple basic blocks. and a basic block may contain multiple instructions. This is the big picture that will be helpful to remember when coding for LLVM. A basic block represents a sequence of instructions with single entry instruction and single exit instruction. This implies that a target instruction must be the first instruction of a basic block, whereas a jump instruction must be the last instruction of a basic block. Now back to our coding. I create a basic block by providing it a context object, a block name, and a reference to the parent function. Once the basic block has been created, we use the builder dot set insert point function to tell the builder that the instructions to be created next must be added to this basic block. We are now ready to add instructions. But first, let's quickly talk about the value class. The value class is considered one of the most important classes in LLVM. Everything that can be an operand of an LLVM instruction or the result of an LLVM instruction must be a subclass of the value class. Therefore, LLVM constants, functions, instructions and function arguments all are subclasses of the value class. Look at the LLVM reference manual and you will find that almost all the LLVM data structures are subclasses of the value class. The advantage of such a hierarchy is that IR generated by each node of an abstract syntax tree can be stored as a value class object which can later be combined at a parent node with other value class objects. Do not worry, we will learn this in detail in our next video. An important subclass of the value class is the user class. The user class is used to track a value use and infer its dependencies. Finally, we must know about the instruction class and its various subclasses. Each instruction has an opcode and operands. The opcode represents the operation to be performed by that instruction, whereas the operands contain the data on which that instruction operates. 
LLVM instructions follow a three address code format, meaning each instruction use at most three registers. Look at LLVM reference manual for the instruction class to see its various subclasses that we can choose. We are now ready to finish our code. First, I use builder.createAdd function to create an add instruction and store its reference in a value object. Next, I use builder.createReturn function to create a return instruction that returns the sum of two arguments. Our code for creating an LLVM function that adds two integer and return their sum is completed. Lastly, I use modules print function to print our IR code. That's it. Our code is complete. I go to the terminal window, use clang plus plus with correct linking options for LLVM and my code compiles without any errors. By running a.out, it outputs the IR of an LLVM function as desired. Yahoo! I hope this video has helped you understand the basics of LLVM classes. In the next video, we will integrate LLVM with Bison to create IR for simple simple C language. I hope you will stay with me. Do not forget to like this video and send me a million dollars. Bye.